Hey folks, welcome to Man Cave Makings with me, Gus. Well, I've got some beautiful English U. Um, I picked these rounds up all, uh, off of eBay in the, in the UK, pretty cheap. Uh, it came air dried, but it was a bit wet, 24% as a moisture content, which is a bit too high. So I built myself a dehumidifying wood kiln uh, and I, I'll drop a little note in, in the description below to that video because so you can see how it got on. But this is now ready to rock and roll and I'm gonna take these four bits of you uh, and make a beautiful side table as a present to my sister. Um, and I, I, I've never worked with this kind of uh, live edged wood before or this size of wood before. So uh, I hope to learn a load of stuff um, and a few techniques along the way that I've never done before, which is really important to me. So that's what I'm gonna do, video the whole lot, hopefully share a load of stuff with you um, and we can learn as we go. So let's get in it. I wasn't quite sure how big the table needed to be, so I made a life-size template, if you like, and then cut that into quarters. I was using small bits of you here, so um, I needed to set them in quarters, cut them out with a jigsaw, um, and then sanded them off to make them square. Um, so when I came to put them uh, together with the biscuits, um, it all matched up um, and, and was square. Here I'm just laying out the biscuits as I want them, uh, and then it's on to doing them, the two quarters together that are gonna be matched together. Um, using the, the, the biscuit jointer here. I doubled them up. Uh, biscuit joints are not really that structural, but um, it's all I've got, so um, I had to make do with them. And then it's just uh, aligning them all, gluing them up, um, clamping them in, um, and making them as square and flat as possible, um, just to, to make sure that when it all gets glued down and gets stuck together, um, you're, you're starting off from a pretty good basis. Um, and then it's just a repeat of the two halves now, um, with the biscuit jointer again, doubled them up. Um, I didn't know whether this was all going to line up, but it worked out pretty good, to be fair. So, um, uh, and again, just gluing them up, squaring them off, um, and clamping them up. So a wee while ago, I made myself a router skid. Um, and uh, it's coming really handy actually, so um, I would advise you making one of these. Um, dead simple to make, um, find a load of stuff on YouTube about that. Um, but essentially you just level the piece off and then it's just a matter of going back and forth, back and forward over several passes um, and uh, taking um, a couple of mil off at a time uh, and then it makes it all nice and flat. And then you, you're left with some fine lines um, and you just sand them off. And then I took it from like a, a 80 grip all the way through 180 to get it nice, nice and smooth. From a cardboard kind of idea, um, I made a metal template. And then from that template, I, uh, I, I then took the sections that I needed um, and made a paper copy of it. Um, so then I could then uh, do another three items each. Um, and then lay them out on the sheet metal uh, and then just simply cut them out with a jigsaw which took quite a bit of time. I wish I had one of those kind of CNC uh, plasma cutters, that would be awesome. Um, but uh, then it's just a, 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 a sort of cut and paste job. Um, each and every time you do it, you just kind of replicate what you're doing. Um, a little kind of bench sort of press here with a, a pipe um, and all you're doing is centering the line um, and then bending it and forming it round. And then it's just tacking up um, as, I, as I tend to do, just tack them all up into place, make sure that they're equal to the, to the template that I've already made. Um, and then um, you just tack away and, uh, and that's how you do it. It's just piecemeal really, um, a, a little bit at a time. And then, yep, you're just on to more welding and more welding and more welding, um, which, to be fair, I spend a lot of time doing and I love, so it's all good. Well, with all the welding done, uh, it was time to buff all of that through to make all the edges nice and round and uniform. Took a bit of time to get that right, um, but it's well worth it um, as I'm painting it anyway, so um, just taking your time to prep that as much as you can. 
Um, I needed to make some kind of bracket to um, affix the tops of the legs to the underneath of the wood round uh, and I came up with this sort of like diamond shape so I could put three bolts up through um, and then just made a cardboard template and then you know just uh, cut that out as I did with the, the leg sections before. So I just drilled some holes for the actual bolts uh, on the pedestal drill. Um, I also made a couple of bigger holes for doing some plug welding. Um, I thought that would be a neater joint than trying to fill it weld something um, and it actually turned out really well. I was really pleased with it and I just basically buffed them off. You're never going to see that kind of stuff. It's uh, going to be attached to the uh, table. So prep, prep, prep. Um, Scottish weather. absolutely persisting down um, and then um, I'm just you know canopy with a, a gazebo and then a couple of I think three coats of grey undercoat and um, stuck it in the garage with uh, the uh, heaters on and then onto the matte black which does look really really good. Setting up my torsion box just uh, with little wings here just so um, when I put the drying kiln on top of it, it uh, it's self supporting. Um, dead easy to do, uh, made out of 50 mil sheet insulation um, and then it's on to the scales for weighing epoxy um, super super accurate have to be um, you get different types for everybody and um, this is glass cast 50 um, made by easy compresses in the UK um, really um, good company to work um, with and uh, the the dies that I'm using here are the translucent ones um, and then just using the two part pour and then it was on to the, putting that into the mould that I made. Now uh, a bit of a mistake here, I put too much um, of the epoxy in and I had to suck it all out with the, the syringes. By then I was fully committed, uh, there was no going back so uh, that, was, uh, that was a good catch. Uh, that I had that syringe handy and then just making sure it's all leveled off and uh, tightened down uh, and then I put one of these ratchet straps around it just to kind of hold it all in just to make sure it, was, uh, it, it wasn't going to wander anywhere. So nippy bum time, put the uh, kiln over the top, seal it all up and, and, and let it uh, let it rock and roll for 12 to 14 hours um, but yeah it did a great job 21 degrees um, and uh, maintained it beautifully. So we're on to the second pour now which was the solid state green um, and grey. This was just by the, uh, the the fleck that goes through it. had no idea what I was doing here, uh, making it up as I went along um, but this uh, these powders give such a brilliant effect. Um, I'll definitely be using these again. Um, and it's just quantity, quantity, mix it all through. And when you get that swirly kind of effect through it, then you know you're kind of a bit there or thereabouts. Um, and then just pouring that into all the cracks and the crevices there. Um, just play around with it with a stick um, as it's in, into the cracks there and it, it makes the effect. Um, just heat gun it off, get all the, the air bubbles out of it. Um, and, I, and then I did it a couple more times as it was drying off um, and it just makes it look absolutely brilliant. So a really exciting time, cracking open the mould for the first time, seeing what I had um, and it all came out really, really well. So it's back on to the uh, router and skid and sled, just removing off all the top surface of the epoxy, um, taking it down, back down to that bare wood um, and then getting back in with the sander and uh, making all the little lines and imperfections go away. So I took that from an 80 grit all the way through to a 240 grit this time. Um, and then onto the poly, the swipe on poly. Um, first time I'd used it um, and wow, it just popped up that grain so nice. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll definitely be using that again. 2000 grit wet and dry, uh, just with a bit of water onto the actual epoxy surface just to buff that up um, and get all the imperfections and scorings out of the, the, the uh, casting. And it was, you know, a bit of elbow grease, but uh, then uh, it was it was well worth it. Um, I used uh, this uh, buffing compound. Um, I'll stick all this in the description so you can see where I got this stuff from. Uh, but uh, yeah, the the uh, this stuff is is, is very good. Um, 
it's obviously got some uh, kind of compound grit in it um, and you just uh, buff that into the resin and it just makes it look like glass it's amazing so it's the first time I've used inserts in uh, any of my pieces and uh, wow this is a game changer for me so this allows you to put six mil uh, machine screws into the to the wood and it's absolutely solid bomber stuff and uh, uh, you know definitely be using these again highly recommend them uh, dirt cheap as well which is a bonus but uh, yeah i'll definitely be using them again so on to the final prep and uh, i was getting excited by this point because i've not actually had the whole table uh, together as a, as a one piece uh, the legs look absolutely brilliant with the, uh, the, the black mat against the resin, against the wood, uh, and it just all came together. And uh, yeah, just super, super proud. Well, here she is, and <laughs> I am delighted with it. Um, cool, absolutely cool as. Um, and, I, and I didn't appreciate how tactile this thing is. Um, the, the wipe on poly um, has, has made this surface just so tactile. It's like a bit of glass almost, and you can feel the different grains, and then between the, the epoxy and the grain, ha. Huh, just absolutely spot on for me. Um, in my videos, I do try and give you everything. Um, I, I give you the good stuff as well as the stuff that potentially didn't go that well. So there's a couple of points I'll take you through just now. Um, it doesn't really detract away, but there was some things that um, I would probably do differently next time. So if you can learn by that, absolutely brilliant. Um, this used to be a little bit wider and a little bit thicker. and I didn't take into consideration the calculation of that when you're using a, a router skid, skid, for instance. So, you know, you're, you're, you're flattening off a surface, you're taking away material. Flip it over, you're taking away material. You put the epoxy in, and then you, you're taking away material. So it's, it's gone, yeah. So it, it, it's a little bit thinner than it, it, it should be, and a little bit thinner uh, in, in width as well. Um, but it's still within proportion. I mean, it still looks good. Um, but it should have been just a little bit bigger, a little bit chunkier. Um, so I need to think about that the next time. The second point, epoxy. Well, I've never used it before. I was a little bit scared about it, to be fair. Um, I was wondering how it would all turn out. Uh, and by and large, it's turned out absolutely great. Um, temperature is super critical, so you've got to pay attention to that. That's why I built this, the, the, the kiln you see in the, uh, in the video. Um, pretty simple to make, but um, really did control the temperature well. The bit before that, um, you'll have seen me in the video making really, you know, pouring stuff in and weighing it and all that kind of stuff. Um, second time I did that. Um, first time round, that um, the part A and the part B need to be at temperature. So your um, mould needs to be at temperature, your wood needs to be at temperature, everything needs to be at temperature. The reason I'm here today is because the workshop is... Whew, Minus four today, Ugh. too cold. And that was the problem, is that the material, uh, the actual epoxy, way too cold. So um, it didn't look great and I worked out pretty quickly that I had to heat it up. Anyway, long story short, be careful with temperature. The other piece is you can't really see it here, but it's got tiny, tiny little micro bubbles within the clear. Um, and the reason that has happened, I believe, is I phoned the company that I bought it from and I didn't seal all of the live edges and all of the cracks and everything like that before doing my main pour. Now, what I didn't appreciate was that when you pour epoxy in, it entraps some of these small uh, air pockets within the wood, within the grains and things like that. And as it goes off, it comes out. Well, it's got nowhere to go, so it sits within the, um, within the epoxy as these little tiny little bubbles. So, um, going in, sealing it, keying it off, and then doing your main pour, that's how you solve that problem, I believe. Maybe you've got some experience in this. Please do drop me a note um, if, if you do. That would be amazing. Um, <laughs> I really like it. Um, 
I hope my sister does. Uh, but it doesn't really matter anyway, because if she doesn't, I'm, I'm going to keep it. So um, it goes quite nicely in, in the room here. So, uh, <laughs> so let's hope she actually really does enjoy it. Um, I, I made it out of four pieces of you because they were only small um, bits of you. Um, so I made it out of four bits and I've kept the line in here so I'm keeping it honest. I'm not trying to make it look like it was one piece of wood. I've just kept it that way. So that's why I've kept the epoxy line in there as well, which really does make it a little key feature as well, which is cool. Um, as always, thank you very much for watching my content. I, I really do appreciate it. Um, I, I'll leave as much information in the description uh, with tools and materials and what I've used. Um, sometimes forget stuff so just drop me a line if there's something that I've missed and you want to know about it um, and I'll try and answer it as best I can. I love hearing from you, your comments are hilarious sometimes, uh, make me chuckle deeply so um, it's what inspires me to do more of this stuff so if it's something you like maybe hit the subscribe button um, or give me a thumbs up um, on a like that would also be amazing. Um, thank you again for watching and as always well I hope to catch you again.